This video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your health care provider before making any changes to your health. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Lost Labia Chronicles where I discuss all things lichen sclerosis. So if you have lichen sclerosis and are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to my channel and keep on watching. And if you have a family member or friend with lichen sclerosis and you're looking to learn more about the physical and mental components of living with lichen sclerosis so that you can better support the person in your life on their lichen sclerosis journey, then also please subscribe to this channel and share it with them. Okay, so in today's video, I am going to talk about a topic that kind of sits at the intersection of treatment and lifestyle. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about my steroid routine, how I use my steroids, how I stay on track, how I don't miss days, um, and how I stay consistent with them. And I'm also going to be sharing some tips and tricks for um, helping to find a schedule that works for you and to be consistent with your treatment plan. And um, this topic was actually requested by somebody on Instagram. So if you do have any questions or topics that you want me to address, please leave them in the comments or you can always contact me directly by you know, going to the description box and I will have all my contact information there. Um, so I do, you know, this is more of a lifestyle treatment video. It's not so much gonna be a deep dive into the science behind the treatment, but I do wanna let you know that I do have a treatment series planned where I'm gonna kind of do a video on each kind of treatment option out there, kind of walk through, you know, what the medical literature says, um, I'll speak from lived experience when there is lived experience to speak from. And um, yeah, so that will be coming in 2022. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, if you're looking to learn a little bit more about different treatment options and how to choose a treatment plan that is right for you, you can check out my free ebook at www.lostlabia/ebook, And I will have that link in the description box below for you to check out. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I treat my lichen sclerosis. So personally, I use clobetazole propionate 0.05%, and I use that in an ointment base. Uh, typically, clobetazole will come in a, a cream or an ointment base. Um, this is my tube. If you use clobetazole, it probably looks somewhat similar, but it'll probably vary depending on the country that you live in. Um, so. When I first was prescribed clobetazole, um, I was kind of treating a little bit unconventionally. Um, when I was diagnosed, I really didn't have much guidance um, other than apply daily until you can see your gynecologist. Um, well, I didn't have a gynecologist, so that's part of the issue is I had to wait nine months to get seen by a gynecologist. So during that nine month interim, I really didn't have much guidance. Um, so I was kind of just, you know, rinsing, drying myself, making sure I was like bone dry. And then I would just kind of like put some clobetazole and call it a day. Um, and in fact, I would also use it like two times a day for quite a long time because I was just so desperate to see results, not knowing that two times daily typically is uh, a little bit too much. And I say typically because there are some cases where, um, you know, a specialist might make that call to um, use it two times a day if the case is severe and if they deem that necessary, but it wouldn't be two, two times a day for a long extended period of time. But so that's how I was treating initially, just kind of slathering it on to bone dry skin and, you know, put it on and forget it. Um, and then when I finally met with my gynecologist at this point, I had been using the uh, clobetazole daily for nine months and he was like whoa 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 like you don't need to go that hard um let's dial it back and he immediately put me on a maintenance protocol of two times a week he suggested a schedule of monday and thursday and i have been sticking to that schedule ever since that day um so now with this new schedule i was like okay we'll do it two times a day cool 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 
Um, and I was doing that for a little bit. And then a few months later, I found Lichen Sclerosis podcast hosted by my girl, Kathy. Um, and she had done an interview with Dr. Krapf, Dr. Jill Krapf from the Center for Vulvovaginal Disorders. And in that video, they talk about steroid use and some myths about steroids and also how to apply your steroids optimally. So I will link that podcast episode in the description box below, and I highly recommend checking it out. It is super informative, and I think you'll learn a lot. Um, I definitely learned a lot. And so one of the things that I learned was that uh, from this podcast was that one of the best ways to apply your steroid is by soaking in warm water for approximately 15 to 20 minutes prior to applying your steroid. Now, one of the reasons that we do this or that it is recommended is because lichen sclerosis causes the skin of the vulva to thicken and harden. Now, you might have heard that it thins the skin. I do have a video on it where I kind of take a deeper dive into what lichen sclerosis is. And I address the question of does LS thin or thicken the skin and you can check that out. Again, there will be a link in the description box below. Um, but since LS does thicken the skin, what the bath does is it kind of softens that thickened skin so that when you go to apply your steroid, the, you know, the steroid ointment can penetrate through the top layer of the vulvar skin into the deeper layers of the vulvar skin, which is where that inflammation lies. All right, so I now want to discuss uh, why I personally choose to treat with steroids. Um, and this is important because I think, you know, uh, it's important to acknowledge that um, while steroids are the gold standard um, of treatment in the medical literature, in the medical community, there are other treatment options available. Um, and I discuss those treatment options in my ebook, but I also, you know, discuss the importance of finding a treatment plan that feels right for you and that you feel comfortable with. And this involves things like, you know, properly educating yourself on the various treatment options, um, knowing the pros and cons of each treatment option. Um, and this is important because almost every treatment option out there, LS or other, you know, there's always some, you know, risk and reward and we kind of have to weigh those out and find something that we feel comfortable with. So knowing the pros and cons, educating yourself, and finding a treatment plan that you know aligns with your values. All of these things are very important when you choose a plan for you. Um, so personally, I choose to treat with topical corticosteroids. Um, firstly, because the literature over you know the overwhelming amount of literature that suggests that topical steroids are the best treatment option at a reducing inflammation, and this has been shown. Um, by comparing pre and post biopsies. Um, so a biopsy before the lichen sclerosis is treated and a biopsy after the lichen sclerosis is treated. And the pathologist finds that on those biopsies, those after biopsies, there's a significant reduction in those inflammatory markers that they see um, in the pre-treatment biopsies. Um, and second, uh, the literature also suggests that topical corticosteroids may reduce the likelihood of lichen sclerosis developing into vulvar cancer. So that's one of the reasons that I choose to treat with corticotopical steroids. That's a bit of a tongue twister, topical corticosteroids. Anyways, um, I also educated myself on the pros and cons of using topical corticosteroids uh, and what that entailed. And I felt comfortable with this choice. Um, of course, that may change as more literature and research comes out. But as things currently stand, I feel quite comfortable in that decision. Um, another thing that was important for me was that it aligned with my values. So my background is in research and science. And so this, you know, choosing to treat with topical corticosteroids aligns with my values of science and evidence-based information. And finally, and this one is actually quite big and important and doesn't always get discussed when we talk about, you know, how to choose a treatment plan and why someone chose a treatment plan is sustainability and finance. Um, so what is sustainable for you long term financially? Um, so I live in Canada and here with my insurance, where's my Cobage's Law? 
<laughs> this tube right here, which is, mm, I think it's 50 milligrams. Okay, well, I can't really see how much this is, but I think this is your standard tube of clobetasol. Anyways, so um, where I live in Canada with my insurance, this tube of clobetasol costs me about $2. And because I'm in remission, I use a very small amount of this two times a week. So this $2 tube will last me over a year. So that's a really long time. This ends up being a really cheap and long-term, you know, sustainable option for me. Conversely, um, when, I was er when I was diagnosed earlier, I was seeing a lot of um, laser treatment options for treating lichen sclerosis symptoms. And when I looked into it, I mean, it didn't really matter what the science said. I could not afford that. Um, cost thousands of dollars, multiple treatments at that, and follow-up treatments, and I just don't have that kind of money. Um, so, you know, for me, I, you know, I needed to think about like, what can I afford? What can I sustain long term? Um, and so, for that reason, you know, that was just another kind of tick on the steroid column for me. Was this happened to be the cheapest? Uh, most sustainable option for me. So that is why I chose to go with my steroids, um, evidence-based information aligned with my values and was financially sustainable for me. Um, and I just want to note that just because I choose to treat with steroids doesn't mean that you should or have to treat with steroids. Um, we're all different, we're all unique. Our lichen sclerosis is at different stages. Some stages may require more things than others, you know, so some, you know, maybe I can just use steroids, maybe another person needs steroids and laser or steroids and surgery because they've lost functionality of, you know, their clitoris or, um, you know, they can't have penetration because there's so much fusing at the entrance of the vagina. So that would count as a more severe case. And so they might also need to consider things like surgery or different procedures. Um, so, you know, I just think that's important to acknowledge, um, that, you know, I'm not here to tell you how to treat. That's not my place. I don't believe in that. I believe in empowering folks to learn about the different options and then make the choice that's best for them and their bodies. All right, now to the fun part. Let's talk a bit about my steroid routine. What do I do? How do I apply it? And how am I so darn consistent in my application? So I'm in remission and I follow a maintenance protocol with my steroids. That means I do them or I apply my steroids two times per week. My schedule is Monday and Thursday. Um, when I spoke to my gynecologist, you know, he said kind of, um, I could do like a Monday, Thursday schedule, or he said there, you know, some folks choose to do a Wednesday, Saturday schedule. And I just felt like I just wanted to leave my weekends open um, and free. So I opted for the Monday and Thursday schedule. Okay, so um, remember how I was telling you when I was first diagnosed, how I would just kind of like rinse off really quick, dry myself off to the point where I was like bone dry and I would just kind of like take the clobetasol in my hand and just be like, and then call it a day. Um, well, during this time when I was early, you know, when I was just diagnosed, I really didn't have any information on lichen sclerosis and what I could and couldn't do. And I falsely <laughs> assumed that I could no longer take baths. And this flipping, like, it gutted me, okay? Because I love taking baths. It has always been, you know, something that I found super relaxing. Um, and I used to take baths like all the time. So the fact that I had to stop really bummed me out. And I pretty much stopped for like about a year or so again, until I heard the podcast and heard that, you know, not only are baths okay, but they're actually encouraged, especially when you're applying your steroids. So when I heard that, I was like, okay, game on. Um, so you know, I was like, okay, hey, cool. So now what my steroid routine looks like is on Mondays and Thursdays, um, I take my bath and I apply my steroids. And I actually super look forward to clobetasol night is what I call it. Um, steroid night, whatever you want to call it. I look forward to Mondays and Thursdays because those are the days now that I get to take my bath. And, um, 
Typically I don't take baths in between just so that I get to kind of keep this as something special and something to look forward to, though of course if my muscles are sore, if I'm tired and I just feel like a bath, of course I'll do it. But for the most part my baths are on Mondays and Thursdays, so I super look forward to those. And I don't just look forward to like sitting in a bath together, uh, together, together with who? What am I talking about? I don't just look forward to taking my bath. I have kind of created this whole like spa night for it. Um, so I take my bath, I turn off all the lights, I light some candles, I get my salt rock lamp lit up. I It, it depends. Sometimes I play some spa music on the speaker. Um, other times I might listen to a podcast or read a book. I have some aromatherapy going, you know, some some nice scents to really get me in that nice relaxation mode. Sometimes I'll even make a little mug of chamomile tea. Um, and oh, and then sometimes I also will do like extra like spa on spa and I'll do like some skincare for my face too. So while I'm taking care of the vulva skin, I'm taking care of the facial skin. Um, so I'll do like maybe a mask or some kind of, you know, facial treatment like that while I soak. So it really becomes a way for me to kind of unwind, de-stress, and we all know how important stress reduction and stress management is for managing our lichen sclerosis symptoms. Um, I also take my baths at the end of the day. They're actually the last thing I do. I kind of take my bath, apply my steroid, go to bed. Um, and so it, for me, it's a really nice way to kind of end the day to slow things down. Um, my job can be very busy when I'm not working. I'm, you know, on the board for Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. I am doing the Lost Labia Chronicles, the blog, the website, the YouTube, social media, all of that. So I'm quite busy and quite all over the place. So to end my day like that really allows me to kind of decompress and slow down and really gets me in that headspace to like go to sleep. Um, so that's kind of what my bath routine looks like. At the end of the bath, I will stand up and then I will rinse the area. Um, I do use a personal wash. I use, um, Good Clean Love is what I'm using right now. So I'll just kind of use a little bit of that, wash the vulva, rinse it off, and then I get out. I pat dry the area with a clean towel, but really important here, it's not like bone dry. It's just a little like you know, gentle pats, and then we're moving on. And then I take about a pea-sized amount of the clobetasol. I go into the bedroom to do this part, by the way. I lie down, I take a pea-sized amount of my clobetasol, and then I rub it on the vulvar area where, you know, I have lichen sclerosis. I don't have lichen sclerosis in the anal region, so I don't touch that part. So for me, it's the vulva. And I rub it in there for approximately 60 to 90 seconds. Um, and what I kind of like to focus on then is just like bodily sensations, you know, um, just trying to connect more with my body and how it feels. So I really take the time to massage it in. I also kind of like to do visualization. So like, because I know that the inflammation is in like the bottom layer, as I'm like rubbing it, I try to like visualize the like medicine seeping down into that like basement layer and like, calming and soothing the inflammation. Um, yeah, I'm super visual, so I tend to always, there's always like something visual accompanying whatever I'm doing. Um, I apply that. Afterwards, I wash my hands. I do apply my clobetazole just with my bare finger. Um, and then I go wash my hands afterwards, and then I go to bed. And that is my steroid routine. And I think that part of why I am so consistent with my applications is because I've created it to be something special. I've created it into something that I look forward to doing. So it no longer feels like a chore. It no longer feels like I'm dragging my feet to go do it. It's something that like I actually want to do. It also makes me feel very empowered. Um, you know, it makes me feel like I'm in control and I'm taking action and steps to, you know, maintain my remission and to keep things under control. So that feels very good as well. So that's my routine and that is how, you know, I manage to kind of stay consistent and never miss a Tuesday, not a Tuesday, a Monday or a Thursday. 
All right, so finally to close this video, I want to end by giving four tips and tricks for being consistent with your steroids or your treatment plan. Um, and the first is to find a schedule that you can actually be consistent with. Um, so I use a Monday to Thursday, but that might not work for your schedule. Um, so it's really important when you're choosing your days to choose something that actually works with your lifestyle. And you know, that, that goes not just for like the day, but also the time. So do you apply in the morning, uh, midday, in the evening, right before bed? Again, find something that works for you. If your mornings are very calm and you don't have much to do, you might opt to do this first thing in the morning. Um, or conversely, if your mornings are just like you get out of bed and you just like jump right into work or jump right into, you know, taking care of the kids, whatever you do, then maybe the evenings make more sense. Um, and the other thing is too, like, don't be afraid to mix and match. So maybe Monday mornings are very quiet for you and you do your steroids Monday morning, but maybe Thursday your mornings, you always have like meetings in the morning. So maybe Thursday you do it in the evening. Um, and if you're on a daily schedule, you know, in the earlier phase of your treatment plan, then you know, maybe Monday to Friday, you do them in the morning and then maybe on the weekends, you do them in the evening. You know, the important part is to choose days and times that work for you. If you decide to, to put your steroids on, you know, during a really busy time of your day, then you're not likely gonna stick with it and you're really gonna probably find yourself forgetting some days, falling off track, and it's just hard. So think about your lifestyle, think about what you have to do and when would be the best time for you to do it? The second tip is to turn it into something that you enjoy. So for me, that looked like making that whole spa evening. Um, and maybe you don't soak, but maybe you sit in like those sits baths, right? Um, and you just kind of soak in there and, and read a book. Maybe you listen to a podcast. Um, Maybe you scroll social media if that's something you like, you know, do some BuzzFeed quizzes, find out what muffin you would be based on the skylines that you like. Um, you know, whatever your thing is, um, but just kind of like find a way to bring something pleasurable into what you're doing. Um, maybe a nice cup of herbal tea if you're in the evening or your morning coffee and read the news. Um, you know, maybe read my blog, um, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Um, but try and incorporate something that you enjoy into it so that it feels a little bit more pleasurable and less like a kind of tedious task. The third suggestion that I have is to set an alarm. Um, you know, I don't know where my phone is. Oh, I'm recording with my phone. Wow, great moment there. Um, but <laughs> so set an alarm on your phone. Um, you know, Phones are pretty advanced these days. We can, if you're on the daily schedule, you can program a repeat reminder every single day at X time or every other day or two times a week and just have that repeating. If you need that extra reminder, if you tend to be a really busy person or it just slips your mind, try actually adding an alarm in your phone. And again, choose a good time. Don't just like put it for first thing in the morning if you know that your mornings are always packed with you know, getting the kids to school or doing a meeting. So set an alarm, but again, choose a time that you're likely to be free so that you can actually get the notification and then step away, go do your application and then return to whatever you're doing. And the last piece of advice that I have, um, you know, and this could kind of substitute um, for an alarm, um, it just depends on what you, what you like. Um, but the second, the, sorry, the last suggestion is to find like an accountability buddy. So somebody that has LS that can kind of hold you accountable and the two of you will kind of check in with each other. So if you're both on, you know, the maintenance protocol, doing this two times a week, someone, you know, that's going to check in with you Monday, Hey, don't remember, don't forget that, you know, at 6 PM, we're going to apply our steroids or did you apply your steroid? It's 9 p.m. I didn't hear anything. You know, just, you know, someone to keep you kind of accountable. And it's nice when it's somebody with LS because then they kind of understand and you can kind of talk through things. And I mean, hey, if you get super close, maybe you both take your bath at the same time and you chat with each other. 
um, you know, FaceTime, chat, whatever, no judgment. Um, so that can be something that can really help. Um, and if you're interested in getting, you know, a kind of LS steroid accountability buddy, um, let me know in the comments below, just say like, yes, I'm interested in accountability buddies or, you know, get in touch with me. Um, because I'm thinking about creating, just kind of setting up a really low key kind of accountability partnership with people and kind of pair people up so that they have accountability buddies. Um, but I'm only going to do that if there is sufficient interest. So if you are interested in that, then please let me know in the comments below or email me. So in closing, being consistent with your steroids can be a really big challenge, but there are things that you can incorporate into your life to help make it a little bit easier, such as making it into something that you look forward to, adding in something that you enjoy, like reading a book or listening to a podcast, um, you know, setting alarms or checking in with somebody to keep you accountable. Um, and just a reminder, you know, if you are interested in some kind of a buddy system, do let me know so I know if there's enough interest to kind of work on that little project. And if you found the information in this video helpful, please give my video a like, a thumbs up, and uh, that's it for this one. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!